All right, so in this video, we're going to make a simple version of the, the Bolt Insert Mesh Brush that I demoed in a couple a couple videos back. And we're going to, just going to use our uh, Polysphere here um, from the Tool menu, which again, if you hit the uh, comma button to bring up the light box, go to the uh, Polysphere, uh, and then you just rebuild the subdivisions on it down to a cube, you will get this. Uh, and uh, take a look at the Z Modeler tutorial uh, if you are unfamiliar with what that process looks like. So we've got our polysphere. I'm just going to duplicate it. So I've got a, an extra one laying around. If we hit D here, we're going to go to a sphere. This D is going to uh, turn on dynamic subdivision. I don't really want to do that just straight to a sphere. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to crease the top edges and the bottom edges. So we'll use Z Modeler brush to do that. I'm just going to put these into their own poly group. Again, just hold the Alt button and click there. And then I can do a crease poly groups. So now when I hit my dynamic subdivision, I'm getting a cylinder because it's only smoothing faces around. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that subdivision. So now I'm, if I hit Control D uh, and we'll go to delete lower, that's our geometry. So we have this nice clean quadded cylinder and then uh, quads in the top and the bottom, which is great. So what I want to do is kind of like, I guess, expand this out so we get that, that cone shape. I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these edges here by holding Alt and clicking on Insert. And then I'm going to mask off my top surface. And we'll just use the regular uh, Transpose tool for this. Or um, uh, tra trans what is it? Transform Gizmo. I, I get confused. Um, so uh, the I can see now I've, I'm sort of working on the wrong side, uh, so I'm going to mask off the top. This is like the green arrow is going to point up, and I want to just be messing with the stuff on the top. So I'm going to invert the mask. So now the bottom is masked. It can be a little bit hard to see for sure, but uh, take my word for it if it's not clear. And I'm going to hold Alt and click on this little map icon, which you can see is going to go to the unmasked mesh center, which will be the top surface there. So I'll just do that one more time so it's nice and clear. Uh, I'm going to mask the area that I want to modify. I'm going to hold Control and click off of the Geo to invert the mask. And then I'm going to press Alt and click on the little map icon to move the uh, Transform Gizmo to the center of the unmasked area. So now that that's uh, in the right spot, I can very easily just expand this out. I'm going to unmask everything and we'll just kind of squash it down a little bit. So now that that's in there, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I guess we can probably hit uh, D and that's looking okay. Like you can see, it's not perfectly circular. It doesn't really matter here. You know, it's, it's uh, just demonstration. But um, one, of the, one of the artifacts that you get from using a polysphere is, uh, to start this with is you can, you can get just a little bit of uh, irregularity in your circular surfaces, but not a big deal. Okay, so what I'm going to do at this point is we'll hit Control W to put everything on one poly group. And I'm going to delete my subdivisions, which is going to be here. Uh, I don't have any subdivisions. Just kidding. Well, maybe I do. I've got to uh, apply my dy dynamic here. Sorry. So uh, this is what the geo actually looks like. And if I turn on dynamic subdivisions with the D key, it's going to get a little bit smoother, and that's great. OK, so I just need to apply those and then delete lower. So that's what the geometry looks like at this point. I'm going to go ahead and mask off the top. This is a very, very convenient feature. And then I'm going to basically like unmask that lower edge. I just want that top to be masked. And you can hit Control W. And it will, well, let's see, it didn't work. Try that again. Just grab like mask rect so it's a little more consistent. So grab the top edges and then hit Control W. Okay, I think I I uh, I was confused because I saw this was masked, but it really was really just these top edges. So once something is masked, you can just hit Control W and it'll, it'll put it into its own polygraph. You see, I, I didn't quite get it there because I've got perspective turned on, and that's just kind of how that went down. Anyway, okay. So at this point, I'm going to get rid of this top surface. I don't need it. I really just want this bottom stuff. So I'm going to do a delete hidden after hiding that top surface, which I could do because it was on its own polygroup. Let's see, flip. So now we're we're looking at the surface and, and this would be, uh, it would be a little bit faceted potentially. You can see the faceting in there, but that would be fine for cutting out this form into an object. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna turn perspective off. This is, this is how to make an insert mesh brush. 
So this is how it's going to be applied to the surface. How, how the camera is looking at your geometry is how it's going to get applied. So you want to make sure you, you turn perspective off and you're looking straight down from the top. And then you go to brush and uh, create and then create insert mesh. If you want to have multiple insert meshes, that's when the multi mesh comes in and that's like kind of a, the next step. But for now, we'll just uh, do a create insert mesh and we'll say new. And then I'm going to come over to my brushes. We can replace move here. And here's my new insert mesh brush. So now let's go back to, oh, we'll just make like a sphere or something. And I'm going to dynamesh it. I guess I need to make it a poly mesh 3D first. Oh, let's see. Dynamesh, default resolution is fine. I'm going to smooth it a little bit so it's uh, nice and clean. I'm going to grab a different material so we can see what's going on here. And then we've got our insert mesh brush, which is right here. So if I just click and drag, you can see there's our geometry being applied to the surface. Now, if I want to modify how it's applied to the surface, what I can do is go to my brush menu. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in here. Um, this is good stuff to know, but I, I don't use it that often. And uh, whenever I need to uh, refresh my memory, I just look up the, the, how this works in, in uh, YouTube. Um, OK, so let's see. We're going to go to depth. So right now, if I want this to be embedded a little bit, I can just lower the depth value and there it goes. Now it's nice and embedded. And if I want it to be embedded even more, you know, you can just kind of go on. So that's obviously too far down. We can't even see it anymore. Something like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and, and just run through this Dynamesh operation. Uh, well, let's see, before I do that, is there anything else in here that I want to talk about? A uh, couple more things. Projection strength is pretty cool, but we'll, we'll get to that probably with a, a another version of this. For now, we'll just uh, we'll just run through this process. So that's the brush menu. I'm going to close that. Uh, so I'm going to do a split. This should look familiar if you watched a couple of videos ago. So we'll do split on mass points. And this is uh, the one that we're going to use to do our uh, negative operation. This just needs to be a dynamesh, which it is. And we can do a merge down here. We'll hit OK. Bump up the resolution here to 512. So you can see there's a piece of it just sort of floating out here in space. And I, I think the reason for that is uh, because the, the negative shell that we used um, might just have been too narrow. Like if you, uh, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to isolate it or try to anyway. So we'll mask and then invert the mask. So I think what happened there is it just kind of looked at that top surface and it basically closed it off. So you don't have to close it off, but ZBrush is going to make this form uh, airtight before it does its dynamesh operation. And it just kind of clipped through and left a little bit of the sphere above it. So that got preserved. So all we need to do here is probably just bring this up a little bit and then we can recalculate and there we go, nice and clean. So that is how to create a very simple insert mesh brush. We can go ahead and do a few more here. Uh, you know what, and before that, I'll just go ahead and we'll hop back to our brush menu since we know now we need to modify our depth to be a little bit higher. We can add a few, do something kind of interesting, whatever, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and unmask everything. Oh, so in this case, uh, because I have this as a separate polygroup, um, when you isolate it, it's going to it's going to um, you know hide that polygroup there as well. So before I do this, I might just want to come over and do like an auto group. So then I'll put this all in one uh, polygroup because it is uh, it's all welded. So anyway, now I can set this. I don't actually even need to, to uh, split it and go through all that process. I can at this point just come down to my uh, polygroups menu, which is way down here at the bottom now. Polygroups, we will do this as a group as Dynamesh sub. And I can recalculate, and there you go.
So that is a very simple way to make your own insert mesh brushes using the Z Modeler brush and the brush menu. And uh, I guess in the next video, we can modify it to throw like a little bolt in there if you want to see how that works.